remember that um, when your professor said that there was some sort of virus that deletes the, or, like alters the CPU source code or something? Yeah. Did you end up saying something about that? Oh, I forgot to ask about it. And I have another professor that knows stuff about that. He does assembly programming, so. Cool. I mean, it could be that they change something. That, you know, so you can actually load something and then kind of alter. I have um, microcontrollers class tomorrow in fact, so he's uh, probably smarter than John that said something about it. Nice, microcontrollers class, that must be fun. Yeah, it's, it's all right. I mean, microcontrollers are fun, I don't know if my class is fun. <coughs> and it's almost like, Who needs microcontrollers, you know? Well, it's a cheaper version of the CPU. Because, uh, because basically, like, full computers are getting down to $30 now. Mm -hmm. Which is what the price of, of microcontrollers used to be. I guess now microcontrollers are $50. In front of these Have you been following all that stuff with Raspberry Pi? With what? With Raspberry Pi and all that good stuff? Uh, no, it's, it's not about... Uh, the Raspberry Pi is an Arduino board. Um, okay. um, but it's, it's created by this non-profit organization. Yeah. So it's basically $35, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And it's comparable with a smartphone. Like the, the kind of hardware you get, <coughs> the kind of in and output you get. Yeah. It's like a smartphone but everything's open source and open and documented. Mm -hmm. So you can really uh, get creative with it. <coughs> and I think they already sold like a million or something, 500,000 or a really ridiculous number already of those things. And somewhere in Brooklyn there's like a hack shop that has it in a vending machine. So you can just go there for $35 in a vending machine and it sells you one. Do you know of any place in New York that you can buy like soldering equipment? Soldering equipment? Yeah. Um, like high end stuff? Well, not necessarily high end, but yeah, like a place that would have high end stuff. Like any place better than a radio shop? No, no, I don't think it is. Because radio shack just kind of sucked the life out of the specialty stores, you know? And then it, there's no more in the specialty stores, so everything has to be ordered online, I guess. Well, there is plenty of that they call radio shock, but a lot of stuff they tell can't fix it anymore. It's kind of interesting that's like in Brooklyn, in downtown, there's a really old radio shack. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of the first, you know, I don't know when they started, but I thought in the 70s or something. It used to be a place of fixed radios. Yeah, when I was growing up, they had a lot of equipment to fix like small electronics. Then they got into that, you know, there was um, an era where there was a lot of, like, new Microsoft electronics. And then it went away, and in my opinion, now it's coming back. A little bit, you know, maybe not to the extent it was, but... But there's kits now, again, like, people make kits to do a lot of stuff. And they usually involve some sort of microcontroller. Yeah. The problem is like, why would you, I mean, I couldn't even think of too many kids that I wanted to own, you know what I mean? Like, 
I, I don't want to just make it for the fun of making it. I would want it to do something that I can't get elsewhere or otherwise. And I know there's like, for example, there's a kit that's called the PVD Gone, or there's a, also one that like jams a cell phone signal, so it drops all the calls around you, you know? Uh, so that is not something you can buy because it's illegal to sell, but it's okay to you know, provide instructions to making it yourself. So it makes sense to build that one yourself because you can't get it anywhere. Right. Or it's not as much. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? You were saying something? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I thought you were saying something in the car thing. Oh no, I was just um, acknowledging what you were saying. Now the TDB gone is simply a remote control that goes through all the different um, infrared off like signals that to all TV brands, you know. Yeah. It just sends like 20 different TV all off uh, codes, and that's it. Oh. Um, and and it's it's, seen that before. it's put into clothing. So this person that made it, she put it into her jacket, and she put like a an optical sensor on the zipper. Yeah. So when, no, not an optical sensor, it just makes contact. Like when you zip by, the zipper makes contact, and then so you open your jacket and it sends all those signals, so it turns all the TVs in the, in the bar or restaurant. <laughs> so uh, a comfortable stay. No, I've seen, um, like, um, when, when smartphones first came out, well, actually, when Nokia's were big, they had the infrared on. Uh, Transmitters on their phones. You were able to use it as a remote control. Yes, but they seemed to scrap the infrared um, transmitters on phones a few years ago. Yep. Uh, now there's external ones. Yeah.